evolved from being in the water? I'm Dr. Dave Lovelace. I'm the research scientist at the University of Wisconsin's Geology Museum. This is a complex question and it's a very fun one for vertebrate paleontologists and still, it's still an active question that is drawing research today. So if we go back deeper into time, past the dinosaurs, before there was anything on land other than um, the initial starts of, of plants, they're just barely beginning to uh, encroach on land. We have organisms that are living in the water that look very much like fish uh, today. We'd look at it and we'd say, hey, that's a fish. And the ones we're most interested in are the, the, the lobe-finned fish, the sarcopterygii. These are things like the currently living, the, the modern uh, coelacanth, which actually has relatives that extend all the way back down to this lineage that we're talking about around 390 to 385 million years ago. And during that time, uh, there was a, a, a divergence between the groups that became the ray-finned fish the, the, and the teleos um, and those that were the lobed-finned fish. And at that split, this animal looks a little bit more like a fish than it does like a tetrapod, like a four-legged animal that might be coming onto land. But whenever you look at the bones in its wrist or in its hands, um, really, they're very primitive. Now, as you progress up the line, the fins, the, the limb elements become more and more developed for what will ultimately be terrestrial adaptation. Now, originally the limbs weren't evolving into hands and things that could be upright because the animals were trying to get on land. They were just living in environments that were more conducive to having a, um, a more solid pectoral girdle attached to their uh, the vertebrae. And the reason you want to have a strong attachment for the shoulders and the, the hips is it gives you more stability and structure for doing things like moving around in shallow environments. And that's where we find a lot of these fossils is more shallow marine environments. And so we start progressing up the line of the, this evolving forelimb. The ribs become uh, larger. They actually evolve ribs that become strong for supporting the weight. Because in the water, they're buoyant. The water's holding them up and they don't need a lot of structural stability. But as you start to get onto land, you need more and more rigid structures that help you uh, maintain the pressure of your body weight out on the surface because no longer is it supported by water. We don't really know what they're doing or why they're going onto land initially. Possibly it's to escape predators. Possibly it's to uh, lay eggs um, to, again, avoid predation. Uh, we don't know exactly what it is. Maybe there were food sources that were uh, really trying to get after that were novel. And it's a whole entire ecosystem that was unexplored by vertebrates at this point.